and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. This is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets and rather exciting week, I might add. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share with you what we are going to be covering today. As usual, we'll begin by taking a look at those broader markets. Where did we end the week? Are we in more bullish territory or not. From there, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of those headline news. It was rather active this week, so I will highlight those that were most impactful and relevant to the market price action. From there, we'll go ahead and take a look at where the strength is currently taking place in the markets. We are seeing a bit of rotation into some newer groups that you'll definitely want to be aware of so you can participate. And then also base breakouts amid this new uptrend that's shaping up and continuing in these markets. So here we are with those headline news. We were on alert and on Wednesday did hear from Fed Chair Powell, who was at an event. And in his speech, he did confirm what was released the prior week in the FOMC meeting notes that the Federal Reserve will consider not raising rates at such a high clip going forward. Now, while the news was quite constructive, we didn't see a big response, uh, primarily because it was anticipated. However, the markets remain in a nice uptrend. From there, also, we did get news that consumer confidence is falling due to fears surrounding inflation. And then private job growth, ADP numbers showed a slowdown there as well. This is good news. We're in that period where poor news for the economy is good news for the markets, as it will help pave the way for the Federal Reserve to re raise those rates at a lower level. U.S. GDP numbers came out, and it too also had a rather mixed result. We did see the economy growing, so that was a little bit of a concern. However, Chicago factory activity contracted, so a little bit of mixed news as it relates to the economy, but overall pointing to a slowdown in inflation as well as economic growth. Very, very impactful were the PCE numbers that came out this week. This is a very relevant number for the Federal Reserve, particularly that core PCE, because it strips out the volatile energy and food pricing and it did come in lighter than expected. And actually, this is the number that didn't get a huge response. But Chair Powell's comments did. We'll take a look at that when we look at the broader markets. But the PCE numbers, really a, more of a non-event, but certainly constructive as it relates to paving the way. We need to see more in the way of inflation being reduced. We're not quite there yet, but good news there. Also, we did hear about November their unemployment report, it came in stronger than expected. And that was today, Friday. The markets did pull back initially on the news, but let's take a look at where the markets closed, not only today, but for the week. Here we are with the daily price chart of the S&P 500. And here is that response to Fed Chair Powell's remarks, which confirmed what was stated the prior week, and that is the Federal Reserve is not against lowering that three quarter of a percent, perhaps down to 0.5 percent when they announce their next rate hike later this month. And from there, this move on Wednesday did push the S&P 500 up above this 200-day simple moving average. And those of you that subscribe to my bi-weekly MEM Edge report will know I've been on the lookout for this because it's really quite constructive to be able to break above this key area of potential resistance. From there, we can take a look at our momentum indicators, that RSI trending upward and above 50, stochastics also above 50, and trending higher. So a little bit of wobbliness certainly going into today's November employment numbers. However, the markets were able to close the day 
back above that 200 day simple moving average. Again, uh, good news there. So that 200 day now becomes this first area of potential support. And ideally, of course, we'd like to see it remain above that. If we go back to this July into August rally, this particular stoppage here had everything to do with Fed Par Chair Powell speaking at that time. And it was very much uh, thinking and talking about raising rates, which totally stalled that rally. But here we are in a period of generally favorable news, which will help propel the markets higher. And I'm going to share with you some other activity taking place beneath the surface that also was constructive this week. So let's go ahead from here and take a look beneath the broader markets. This is a daily price chart, two-month view of the 11 sectors in the S&P 500. I've gone ahead and added that RSI indicator and sorted it in descending order. So up here on this upper left quartile, these are your stronger areas. Lower quartile are your weaker areas. And this is an ideal way to capture and get in front of sector rotation as it takes shape. You're going to be on the lookout for groups that are have been weaker and watch for them to progress to the forefront. And then likewise, as groups fall out of favor. So let's go ahead and focus up here with this group that has been in the forefront. And this is healthcare stocks, a very healthy uptrend. I'll share with you one area in particular that's helping to drive this area and this group higher. And a lot of this has to do with two factors that are in play, again, beneath the surface of the markets. And that is a flight to what I can only term safety, these large cap safer pharmaceutical stocks. But it's not just that these pharmaceutical companies, Pfizer, Lilly among them, they have drugs that are in their pipeline. They have merger activity and a lot going on that is going to propel them higher. So we have growth plus that safety aspect as Investors still are rightfully very uncertain as it relates to will we have a hard landing or a recession or will we, we be able to come out of this rate hike cycle unscathed. So healthcare looking quite constructive. And then consumer staples, very, very similar dynamic where we have these larger staple companies, both areas provide stocks with high yields, another safe haven, but also seeing the growth. These companies in the staples area, Kimberly Clark among them, uh, lots of other names where they have been able to raise their prices in the face of inflation and consumers are not really pushing back, particularly similar to Pepsi. Uh, these companies have loyalty, brand loyalty among their consumers. So also up here at the forefront, industrials, I will get into that a little bit more as well. And then materials. Now, this is a bit newer. It has been creeping up, but this week, extra vibrant. The basic materials group did outperform the S&P, which was up a little over 1%. I'll get into that as we move forward as well. Now, let's go ahead because we cannot ignore these areas that are down here in the weaker quartile. And most relevant here, or certainly important from my work, is the fact that energy that had been up here during this rally phase, it had been up there in the forefront as the strongest sector for quite some time. And we can see that the energy sector is generally in a no-go environment while the rest of the markets, or certainly a good part of it, is moving higher. The RSI poised to turn negative. This is an area that my MEM Edge report had overweighted here, but we've begun peeling names back. And there's a lot taking shape behind that. Among them, we'll take a look at Brent crude oil pricing as one of the drivers, but also note that energy stocks fare well when interest rates are rising and inflation is rising. So we have that negative backdrop as well. So let's go ahead and move further and take a further look at these markets as they begin to shift and take a little bit of a different shape. Here we have, again, that two-month daily price chart view. These are ETFs that are highly relevant as far as keeping you and me on top of what's taking place in the market. So let's take a look at that strength versus weakness here. I did mention healthcare 
by way of those big pharmas faring well. But here's another vibrant area, and that is biotech stocks. IBB is the ETF. This is an area that I did get MEM Edge subscribers into back here at the end of October when we saw this downtrend reversal take shape. And a lot of the talk from my report at that time was the fact that during the 08 recessionary period, when the markets were down 34%, there were two biotech names that not only outperformed, they were up the most that year in the S&P, up about 25%. Both of those names are on my MEM Edge suggested holdings list. They still look quite strong. But since then, this move has broadened out considerably. And I've continued to add very select stocks as they come into favor. Again, all about new developments among drugs and again, M&A activity. So lots of real reasons for this group to be up here at the forefront. We talked about basic materials. Gold would be certainly at the forefront there. And here we are, GLD. We can see this gap up on Thursday and then a little bit of a pullback today day and lots of dynamics taking shape here. I'm going to share with you one of the reasons gold is on the move. There actually are a couple of other geo, not political, but certainly international uh, events as well, also driving these stocks higher. So let's go ahead and move forward and take a look at some of these other areas that are moving to the forefront. The technology sector group traded in line with the S&P up just a little bit, but there are pockets of strength that are really ebbing and flowing. This is the semiconductor ETF SOXX, had that big move on Powell's remarks on Wednesday and has had difficulty since then retaining that rally. A lot of this having to do with earnings still coming forward, companies pre-announcing, and there is weakness in the group. However, there are bright spots as well. So keeping a close eye on this particular group because we want to see participation broaden out beyond those large cap safer haven names. So, uh, software stocks were up 2% more than the broader markets. I would attribute quite a bit of that to Microsoft, which was up 3% this week. But there are other bright spots among here as well. Again, earnings driven. I'll share with you another stock in that software space that fared well. And I'll also share with you one that did not. So it's a very large group. Software has over 350 stocks in that group. It's very unlike semiconductors where there are only 100 names that are publicly traded because of that high barrier to entry. So from here, we talked about energy being in that lower quartile. Let's take a look. Here's Brent crude oil. It was down 4% this week, but we are seeing a bit of a recovery. So keeping an eye on that as it relates to those energy stocks. And then one other area that I would be uh, actually too remiss to not share with you. Here we are with the yield on that 10-year treasury. We talked about the Fed talk, uh, mentioning their ability and uh, wanting to not raise rates at such a large high clip. And here we are with the yields declining, the 10-year yield now down at 3.5%. This is good news for the markets and most specifically for growth stocks, but the move into these growth stocks is quite selective. I would tell you it's very much earnings and growth driven as it relates to the move there. And then last up here, we want to take a look at the US dollar. We had a significant move downward here. And generally speaking, as the dollar gets lower, this is good news for commodities such as gold, silver, copper, steel, and so forth. We did not see a bullish move in Brent crude, but the other areas did fare well. And that explains that move into the materials sector uh, this past week. So from here, let's go ahead. I want to share with you a couple of names that had base breakouts and why and how we are still not at the total end of earnings season. So let's take a look at a company that would not normally be on my radar, but it did experience a big gap up. Let's see if I can... I apologize, the ticker symbol here is, um, here we are. 
Okay, so BBW, and I'm pointing this out to you for a couple of reasons. This is Build a Bear Workshop. It's a smaller retailer, both online and brick and mortar. But what I did want to point out to you is something that has been occurring specifically among retailers recently. The retail stocks are the last to report their earnings. So with this move here, we can see that BBW in this case had this, uh, let's see if I can refine this a little bit better, but we did have this gap up into a base breakout. It occurred on very heavy volume. That's very bullish behavior. This is something when I, in my simpler trading stock charts, uh, live trading that I pointed out the fact that it did appear to have further upside, and I will share how that came to light. But with BBW, this big gap up, you can see a continuation rally taking shape in addition to coming out with good numbers, management guided higher. And then also we had that lovely Barron's article that talked about the relative inexpensive. It's trading at about 10 times on the multiple side. So this gap up into a base breakout continuation rally, but let's do this. I want to drill down into an intraday chart to share with you that when you see these stocks as we are among retail having these gaps up oftentimes there's a belief that you missed the move but if you are a more active trader and you're interested in potentially getting involved you can go into an intra day chart. I don't do this super often, but certainly when you have these kind of price actions. So in fact, I'm going to go to a 1 hour price chart and share with you some of the dynamics that would have gotten you into this stock after that gap up. So here we are into that first hour after the report was released, and we can see that we had a rally upon that gap up. It's very helpful to pay attention to the next three bars after that gap up. And if that third bar closes above the high of that first day or first hour, that generally is statistically bullish. And we can see we had a nice continuation rally into the remainder of that day. And then a little bit of a slight pullback, but take a look, your momentum remained positive during that pullback period. You could stay with it. The stock traded and stayed above the five and 13 hour moving average, and then had a nice continuation rally for a third day. So just instructful, instructing, uh, and showing you those dynamics that can get you in front of these names. One other thing I did want to share with you that I do every day very regularly is take a look at these S&P 500 most of on the day percent change here on stockcharts.com. Oftentimes it will be earnings related, not always, but often uh, you will see these names appear and depending on why they are moving higher, they will oftentimes over the course of that week, continue to trade higher, particularly if it is earnings related. So I'm going to take us right into the list from today. I want to share with you a couple of areas that came to life later in the week. This is on phase energy. It is a solar panel provider, and it's one of my MEM edge report stocks that we picked up. Uh, it is certainly in an uptrend, but today it really had a super rally on very big volume, in essence, waking up because it has now broken out of a consolidation phase. So just if you can bear with me here, I'm going to mark up this chart and share with you uh, exactly what I am uh, highlighting here. And that is that we had this back and fill formation period for some time, two weeks. And we can see that today's price action broke us back above this high among this price range, which is very bullish. And now the stock is trending higher. From there, I will share with you an ETF that can help you participate because if we go back to that top 10 performers, there was another solar. The second biggest performer is Solar Edge SEDG. For those that are more inclined to play the group move, uh, I'll get into what uh, an ETF that can help you capture this move into biotech names. The other way that you can use that percent up 
top 10 in these indexes is take a look and be on the lookout for themes. This is something that really was very helpful for my work this week because we were beginning to see a pickup back into these aerospace and defense stocks. First up, we can take a look at Boeing. I talked about base breakouts. This is another stock that broke out of a flat base formation. This is a daily price chart of Boeing. And here we are with that flat back and fill base period and today's move pushing it up above and into a nice base breakout. The other uh, defense stock in this grouping is not quite as mature, but it is Huntington Ingalls. And what I'm going to point out to you here is something that occurred among many defense stocks where they were rallying to new highs. This was an area uh, where they were reporting good earnings and the th thinking that defense spending among governments would remain high. But we did have a pullback. Now, this stock pulled back quite a bit further than the other names that I follow, but it is worth noting because of the midterm elections, that red wave did not occur that was anticipated. And hence, these stocks pulled back because there was thinking that defense spending would be reduced. Reduced, but now they are coming back into favor. So this is an area that I would say take a close look at. But also importantly from this movement is how you can get in front of these potential industry groups that are coming back into favor. So from here, I did want to go ahead and share another area that I was remiss in not putting into that industry group, but it does Definitely, this is another one that a number of stocks hit those top 10 this week. This is IHI US Medical Devices ETF, poised to break back above this 200 day simple moving average. We had a number of big, uh, large names that had these big moves this week. That's Danaher and any number of names. So I did want to share that with you. But going back to the federal government spending area. I did want to uh, share with you a stock that had a big breakout this week. And this is Floor Corp, FLR is the ticker symbol. And this particular company, for those of you that watched the stock charts forum, the live show that we put on last month, this was my among my top five picks because of the fact going into this August period, they were continuing to get government contracts from China, the Netherlands, and elsewhere. And so we had a nice advance back and fill base formation and then a nice base breakout today on big volume. So I do believe I have a few more minutes here. So I did want to point out to you a couple of other names that have broken out and out of bases, and they are in groups that are currently being favored. This particular company is, I apologize with my uh, two thumbs here, but here we are with Celsius Holdings, C-E-L-H. It is in the consumer staples. It's a beverage company that is active in the energy space, fitness, and so forth. And what we are looking at here is this nice, base formation into a breakout today. The stock also has this nice momentum here with that RSI trending upward, heading north. And then likewise with that MACD, if you look at the stock historically, you can see that the MACD has and the RSI has a predisposition to continue to trade higher. So this is a really quite attractive chart. We can also take a look at the company that actually did put money into uh, Celsius earlier this year. This is Pepsi, PEP. -E I talked about this being among those consumer staple stocks. In fact, I wrote about Pepsi back here on Stock Charts articles when they came out with their earnings. It's a nice continuation rally taking shape there. One other name that we can take a quick look at here as it relates to what can take shape beyond this base breakout, provided the dynamics are there. This is Air Products APD. In this particular case, very similar to what I've been mentioning is when you have a company report earnings and what's been really important this quarter is management guiding higher and you see this gap up into a base breakout 
on strong volume with momentum shifting to the upside. Oftentimes you will get put, uh, the stock will get thrust into a nice uptrend here. And that's what's taking shape here, another new high. So keep your eye out on for those gaps up into base breakouts on earnings and they can really pay off. That's it for now, everyone. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'll look for you again here next. Friday. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.